Greetings and salutations, YouTubers. This is Zillafan85, back today with my latest video, my latest figure review. Today, just a simple one for you guys. We're going to go ahead and take a look at my Bandai 1964 Larva Mothra figure. Uh, so this one, I haven't really seen it reviewed on YouTube before. This was, uh, you know, I, one that I definitely wanted to add to my collection, um, you know, because as you may know, I've already reviewed my Sci-Fi Revel Tech, uh, uh, you know, Mothra figure, which is based on the original 1961 version of Mothra, obviously in her adult uh, Emigo form. Um, but, you know, I wanted a Showa-era Larva Mothra to go with it, and I found, lo and behold, on eBay, found the, uh, the Bandai version here. <laughs> So, you know, definitely glad to have it in my collection. Again, uh, the Showa-era Mothra is, is uh, you know, pound for pound my favorite version of Mothra anyway. So, um, you know, so definitely, again, something I'm very glad to have. So, again, this is the 1964 in particular incarnation of Larva Mothra. And this particular version as well is from the, um, is from the film from 1964, Mothra vs. Godzilla. Not the version uh, which also is from that year of Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster uh, because that version of Mar Larva Mothra was a little bit different. We'll get into that when, when I do the review. Um, but let's go ahead though and jump on into it. We're going to start with the card. So this is the card that it came with and again kind of confusing enough it came with a, um, a card that's got the uh, you know sort of that poster image from Destroy All Monsters on there Again, that, that film's from 1968, and this Larva Mothra is 1964. So I'm not really sure why they did that uh, Bandai when they came out with the tag. Um, but nonetheless, so pretty cool. You can see the Bandai logoing and some of the uh, information here. And then, of course, you got some legal information on the back. So pretty, pretty plain, pretty, uh, pretty simple card nonetheless. Again, not really sure why they used the Destroy All Monsters image, but eh, it is what it is. So uh, nonetheless, now on to the figure itself with the paint and the detail here. So you can see uh, Larva Mothra, pretty much a uniform color, mostly so anyway. Basically this, uh, this sort of brownish paint color representing her sort of caterpillar-like skin, um, but not just one solid brown. As you guys can see, there is actually, um, uh, you know, there is shading that's done throughout the figure here to um, to at least kind of, uh, you know, make it pop a little bit more. So you've got different shades of brown, which is nice. You can see on the top this sort of strip of this lighter brown color, and then on the sides there, this sort of darker brown. Uh, really, really nice. Nice and bumpy, the segments here you've got for her caterpillar body. Really, really nice, along with that sort of um, that three-prong tip at the end of her tail, if you will. That looks really cool. You got on the underside, you got the suction cups that she's got for gripping along the floor, along with the uh, sort of caterpillar legs as well. And they're all etched in, as you can see, to add some nice detailing. You can see that on both sides, captured really well. You can also see on the underside the uh, all the labeling here, all the copyright information, the Bandai Japan. So, very, very cool. And I like all the segments on the bottom as well here. Showing her body segmented as well. Again, that caterpillar-like design really looks nice. Um, and then otherwise, you got some nice uh, bumps and sort of ridges here along the sides of the body. Show some nice little detail that they added in there. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, and the face here definitely captured the look of Larva Moth well. Uh, you got, now this is where I was talking about, you got the two tiny blue dots for the eyes in the deep sockets there. This is, again, this is indicative of, um, of the Mothra versus Godzilla version of Larva Mothra. In Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, and later in Destroy All Monsters, believe it or not, um, her eyes were actually uh, red. They were red dots, not blue. So, 
that's how you know which version of larva mothra it is. So, um, so that's really the telltale sign right there, like I said. Um, and then otherwise, though, some very nice detail work here on the face. You got the uh, sort of tusks on the sides of her face there. You've got the mandible that she's got there with the mouth, the maw, if you will. Nice detail work there, as you guys can see. So, very, very good. All the grooves and everything captured well on the face, too. So, give her a little bit of a battle-worn, battle, uh, battle -worn, uh, you know, features about her. And um, just really, uh, excuse me, just really, really captures the look of Larva Mothra pretty well, I'd say. So, that pretty much covers it for the paint and the detail. Um... Next, we'll go ahead and look at articulation. Uh, pretty, pretty darn basic again. A Bandai vinyl, um, and this is of course not Monster Hearts, where it does have, um, you know, uh, uh, articulation in all the segments of her body. Here, it's just at the head. You've got rotation here. You got with the one joint, and it actually can. Gotta, play with it a little bit, but you can get it to spin all the way around. I wouldn't really advise it. I'd, if you want to look to the side to side, that would be a little bit more advisable than trying to spin it, but you can get it to go all the way around. It's a little bit of an effort, though, so just keep that in mind. And as far as articulation, that's it. Just that one point. Um, so that covers that for that. And next up, just for sizing, so this larva Mothra is, again, it's about in the 6 to 7 inch range, so it'll go pretty well with your other uh, 6 to 7 inch uh, figures. Um, now for this particular sizing, I thought I'd go ahead and get out, though, the Revel Tech Mothra figure. So, again, even though this is based on the 1961 version, I mean, it's, it's going to be close enough as far as matching up a larva Mothra with this. And even though, yeah, obviously this figure in particular is smaller than the larva Mothra, um, I still think it works pretty well, nonetheless. I do think they look pretty good together. I do have these sitting uh, together on my shelf. So, I like the way that it looks, honestly. So, it may not be 100% accurate, but I still think they look pretty good together, honestly. And, you know, it's limited your options as far as Showa Mothra figures. So, uh, I know X Plus has some. Uh, but obviously those are extraordinarily expensive, so, and of course, yeah, the Revel Tech one is quite expensive as well, but, you know, again, just to be able to add it to your collection, you know, if you're in the market, definitely worth it. Um, so that's it for the sizing, and, and as far as, um, the Larva Mothra goes, as far as price goes, this one is not, is really not that bad, honestly. Um, I've seen numerous sellers on eBay and what have you offer it. It's usually, it's usually in that sort of 20 to $30 range, so, again, for, um, for a standard Bandai vinyl figure, it's, it's really pretty reasonable. It's not, like I said, it's, it's pretty readily available, so it's not super rare, so, um, if you guys are interested, I, I definitely do recommend it. I think it's a good pickup and a good way to add a Showa Larva Mothra figure to your collection, so... Um, so other than that, though, I think that uh, does about wrap it up for this video, folks. I would definitely like to thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you would like to subscribe, please feel free to do so. If you would like to like and or comment on any of my videos, please feel free to do so as well. And just remember, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, you be good to yourselves, and sayonara.